Welcome back to my channel. Uh, this video I wanted to do something uh, completely different. Uh, something that I don't usually do. I wanted to try a couple new things. Um, if you've not seen, there's a, a guy here on YouTube called John Menza. And I saw a video of him painting with uh, white gouache. Gouache, whatever they call it. Um, I can't find any on my white gouache, but I did find um, Chinese white watercolour. This is the Cotman brand. And so I thought I'd give this a try instead of using gouache. Um, just just applying some on wet paper. Oh, by the way, this is hot press paper. And if you've not seen John Menza... Uh, it, I just love the way he paints. He uh, he makes watercolors look like oils, and uh, it just baffles me the way the way he gets these results. Uh, really good, really good channel he's got. So check that out. Um, and I just thought I'd try this. So I'm just applying the white, and uh, it does um, see see what effect that gives. So I'm using hot press paper, so it's not something that I would tend to go for but it's the last uh, paper that I've got left that I could find I do have some rag rag paper but I'm not really a massive fan so for this painting I'm just adding uh, some a light mix of yellow ochre for the sky and then I'm just tapping in some of the uh, ultramarine blue um, bearing in mind I've got a little bit of white on the paper I'm not sure if it's working as it should, um, maybe I could add more. Um, there's a few factors really. There's a few different um, things that I could try. Uh, maybe apply in more of the white. Maybe try gouache next time. Maybe um, cold press paper. Uh, just just quite a few things. So it's it's quite it's quite nice, and that's one of the things that I like about watercolor. You got all these different factors coming into play, but I think the main thing is if you just have fun with uh, what you're doing, and sometimes I'm I'm not really bothered about the end result. It's just the uh, the painting process. I just want to try different things. Uh, you can see just just adding a little bit of red into the uh, blue to give me that um, purple sort of color. And then just uh, darken things a little bit further with a little bit of um, pen's grey. So I don't usually mess around too much with sky. Um, but I want to take out some clouds. Just lift a few. Um, lift a bit of that pigment. So with a damp, clean brush. This is uh, the Hague. I'm still using the Hague. The one inch Hague brush to do this um, but you could use any any brush or you could use uh, tissue or towel or anything like that to lift but I just wanted to try and uh, do it all with uh, this this hair brush so I don't know whether it's made any difference the white um, I can't see much of a difference um, like I said maybe I could add more white maybe I could mix it with paint I don't know just just different things that you can do um, but I remember I remember speaking to Joe um, when I first started my channel well I said when I first started my channel I think maybe a few years ago um, I wanted more people to see my I wanted more subscribers more people to see my channel and uh, I reached out to Joe and said how do you get more subscribers how do you you know um something along those lines and uh, it was quite interesting what he said he he, he said you know it, it doesn't matter just just keep doing what you love doing just keep painting and uh people will find your channel you'll you will get a following you will get people and uh if, if you haven't seen joe joe menzer's videos um, I like to call him, uh, I like to think of him, I don't know, I think he reminds me saying this, but he's like the Mr. Cool of watercolour, and he almost reminds me of Bob Ross, the way he does these paintings, 
um, very much like Hoyle, the way the um, watercolour comes out. Um, so it's really interesting, so do, do check out his channel. Um, so I have learned quite a lot of stuff from, uh, from his channel. Quite a lot of techniques, quite a lot of different things that he does do. I think he likes to try uh, new things and definitely likes to push the boundaries and break the rules, as, as I said in one of his last videos. Um, but do check him out. So I just just wanted to add some mountains in the scene. It's one of those scenes that I like to just return and paint again and again. Uh, different different ways and different things I could add. Um, try and paint them in different ways. So I'm just using the same sort of mix, the sky mix that I used. And just popping these mountains. And I will be adding some white to these mountains as well. That's one of the things I just wanted to try. I wanted to give it a good go um, using white in my watercolour. Just to see what happens and see what sort of effects I can get. Um, everyone's got a different style. And it's quite interesting to see. Um, you could have uh, different people painting the same thing. But you'll see many different results. I remember a few years ago. I was a member of um, Sketchbook Club in Manchester. And we used to meet up in um, various different locations. Um, I used to go sort of once a fortnight, Saturday morning till Saturday afternoon, maybe for two, three hours. And so we'd all meet up at a certain location and uh, sort of disappear, do our own thing, uh, find somewhere to sit there and sketch and back with our sketches and uh, meet up um, have a coffee or a drink in a cafe and uh, we'd share what we've done and it was quite interesting the the many different styles the many different um, painting styles that we'd would see and uh, a lot of times it was the same same um, same thing that's been painted but in all these different ways and so you've just got to keep going and, and find your style. I know that was something that was quite quite hard for me to understand when I, when I, for a long time. Uh, I didn't understand the style that I painted. But I think the more you paint, the more sort of natural. Um, the way you paint becomes more natural. And I, think, I guess when it's more natural, that's your style that you've got. So... Just taking out some of this paint now for the uh, mountains and then I'll be adding some white, um, Chinese white watercolour to that. Um, I, I don't know the difference between um, the Chinese white, I think it's quite um, quite thin, um, maybe white gouache is a bit thicker, a bit more opaque. I'm not sure, but if, if anybody knows the difference, I'm not really, um, don't really use much white normally, but if you could let me know the difference, I would appreciate that. Just drop a comment in, in the comment section. I'm just using um, just my brush just to get a little bit of the white out, and then I just uh, squeeze a little bit out. Um, sometimes it's easier just to do that, and then I'll go ahead and scrape that into the mountains. So I am using a razor blade here, just um, just wanted to give that edge a try, more of a clean edge. Um, you can see, just just gives a little subtle effect. I think it would have been more effective on a darker background, but um, I'm quite happy the way um, it's looking, just to give that nice little subtle um, effect. And it just looks like a little bit snow on the mountains.
so I've got that nice sort of dreamy like backdrop mountains and nice bit of sky almost mysterious looking now what I want to do is add some contrast some real sort of dark colors in the foreground just something a little bit different to what I normally paint and this is a scene that I've made up so um, there are no rules I just thought I'd add something a little bit different so I want some really nice dark contrasting uh, colors pretty much one color and then I'm just going to scrape out some buildings some roofs and just all different things and things going on so it's a little sort of village in the foreground What I'm doing here is just picking out some little details you can see. I'm not really bothered what these shapes are, um, just as long as they represent some sort of building or structure. Or I'm letting the viewer sort of fill in the details. Um, so it's not quite clear what it is, just scrape out some shapes and add in some little details with the pen. That's pretty much it. You can see the roofs of the buildings. So that's all I wanted to sort of capture. But the rest is pretty much imagination. So I wanted something quite different this scene and um, something quite dark in the foreground with the um, soft sort of background, the backdrop, the mountains with bits of snow on. Um, but let me know what you think of this one. Um, I hope you do like it. If you, if you want, you can give this a try, give this a go, something like this. 
um but just just adding color and just um adding shapes really and uh, taking scraping out and just seeing what happens and now just removing the tape always a nice touch to finish off the painting just gives that nice clean border and it also helps you to see what your painting would look like if you do want to get this framed it just uh, makes it looks makes it look so much nicer so there you you go i hope you like this one uh slightly different something i'm not used to sort of doing so i'm using use of uh, chinese white watercolor and then using um really dark sort of paint and scraping out a little bit in the foreground just to give some sort of contrast uh, but let me know what you think give us a thumbs up if you're not subscribed to my channel then please do subscribe i do have lots of other videos for beginners and intermediate sort of painters for you to check out but that's it for this week i hope you like this one thanks for watching and i'll catch you in the next video take care bye